Welcome to Gourmet Briefing. The content of the briefing includes social media reactions to UNC's execution in the exhibition blowout. Have you used a food bank recently? How close are you to not being able to afford groceries? US FDA asks to not purchase certain eye drops due to infection risk. COVID-19 treatments to enter the US market with a hefty price tag. Pub goers, pensioners join the front line as one in five struggle to put food on the table. Social media reactions to UNC's execution in the exhibition blowout. Yahoo! The University of North Carolina men's basketball team received a positive response from fans on social media after an exhibition game against St. Augustine. Despite being a preseason game against a lower level opponent, fans were impressed by the team's fast pace, ball movement, and sharp shooting. Social media comments noted that the team looked good and showcased newly acquired talent. However, some wondered how the lineup and playing time would be distributed. Overall, fans expressed excitement for the team and looked forward to the upcoming season. Have you used a food bank recently? How close are you to not being able to afford groceries? CBC. According to a new report from Food Banks Canada, Canadians are using food banks at the highest rate since 1989. In March 2023, nearly 2 million people used a food bank, a 32% increase from the previous year. This increase in food bank usage comes as food prices continue to rise in Canada. As a result, the heads of Canada's major grocery chains have been called to Ottawa to discuss plans to stabilize prices. The article also poses two questions for readers, have you used a food bank recently, and how close are you to not being able to afford groceries? Additionally, with Israel expanding ground operations in Gaza, the article asks readers how they are handling difficult conversations about the Israel-Hamas war with family and friends. US FDA asks to not purchase certain eye drops due to infection risk. Yahoo! COVID-19 treatments to enter the US market with a hefty price tag. The Toronto Star. Pfizer has set the price for a five-day treatment of its COVID-19 drug, Paxlovid, at $1,390. The treatment will enter the private market next week after millions of free courses were distributed by the U.S. government. Patients on Medicaid, Medicare or without medical insurance will not pay out-of-pocket costs through to the end of next year and Pfizer will also offer copay assistance until 2028. The Department of Veterans Affairs, Department of Defense and Indian Health Service will still have access to Paxlovid held by the government. Pub goers, pensioners join the front line as one in five struggle to put food on the table. ABC. A country pub in Childers, Queensland, has launched a 24-7 food pantry to help families who are struggling to afford groceries. The Grand Hotel stocks the pantry with proceeds from Friday night raffles and encourages people to take what they need. One in five Queensland households is experiencing food insecurity to some extent, according to a recent survey. The hotel's initiative has been welcomed by the community, and other small businesses are also joining the fight against food poverty. Update 1 Bayer ordered to pay $175 million in latest Roundup cancer trial. Yahoo! Bayer has been ordered by a Philadelphia jury to pay $175 million in damages to a retired restaurant owner who claimed his cancer was due to exposure to the company's Roundup weed killer. The verdict includes $25 million in compensatory damages and $150 million in punitive damages. Bayer has said that the verdict is unfounded and that it is confident the verdict will be overturned on appeal. Last week, the company was ordered to pay $1.25 million in a separate Roundup trial. I'm terrified of e-bikes after food courier smash. BBC. Cycling Scotland, a Scottish charity, is supporting calls for more responsible use of e-bikes after a cyclist claimed to have been hit by a food delivery courier riding an e-bike. Ben Williams, who was cycling home in Glasgow last year, suffered a serious injury after being hit by an e-bike ridden by a courier traveling the wrong way. Williams's injury was so serious that he had to be treated in hospital for a torn kidney. He now wants to raise awareness of how dangerous e-bikes can be when not used properly. 10 names to watch ahead of the 2023 NFL trade deadline. Yahoo! As the NFL trade deadline approaches, several notable players are being mentioned as potential trade candidates. The Minnesota Vikings could decide to move on from quarterback Kirk Cousins, who is likely to leave in the upcoming offseason and has a no-trade clause in his contract. Running back Derrick Henry of the Tennessee Titans could also be on the move as the team looks to the future and has a potential replacement in rookie Tyge Spears.
Wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins of the Titans could be another player on the move, with the LA Chargers and the Detroit Lions and Dallas Cowboys in the NFC being potential landing spots. The New York Giants, sitting at 2-5, may be open to trading some of their valuable players. Running back Saquon Barkley, who is on an expiring contract, could be moved to a contender, while cornerback Adore Jackson, defensive tackle Leonard Williams, and wide receiver Paris Campbell could also be trade candidates. The Denver Broncos, with a 2-5 record, could look to rebuild and may be open to trading wide receiver Jerry Judy and left tackle Garrett Bowles, among others. The Minnesota Vikings could also consider trading defensive end Danielle Hunter, who leads the league in sacks, while the Carolina Panthers may be willing to move pass rusher Brian Burns. The Washington Commanders could be open to trading defensive end Chase Young or fellow defensive lineman Montez Sweat. Wide receiver Hunter Renfro of the Las Vegas Raiders and running back Dalvin Cook of the New York Jets are also mentioned as potential trade candidates. Empty 200-year-old cottage frozen in time. BBC. Penrose Cottage, an ancient Welsh home, is set to be preserved by a new group formed by locals. The cottage, which is 200 years old, is an example of a traditional 17th to 19th century Welsh house-building tradition known as Tyanos which translates to house in one night. The new group, called Friends of Penrose, aims to attract volunteers and funding to safeguard the property's future. The cottage, now owned by Pembrokeshire Council, was last occupied in 1968 by two elderly sisters, Maria and Rachel Williams, and was once a tourist attraction in the area. First Minister praying family survive the night as Gaza conflict intensifies. The Independent. Scotland's First Minister, Hamza Yousaf, has expressed concern for his family as Gaza experiences heavy bombardment. Yousaf revealed that he has been unable to contact his wife's mother and her husband, who have been trapped in Gaza since the Hamas attack on Israel on October 7. Yousaf wrote on social media that telecommunications have been cut off and he can only pray that his family survives the night. He has also written to political leaders in the UK, urging them to support a ceasefire in Gaza and take action to prevent a humanitarian disaster. Yousaf called for a humanitarian corridor to be open to allow life-saving supplies into Gaza and safe passage for civilians who want to leave. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your faithful observer from the Six Degrees World, here to bring you the latest news and analysis. Let's dive into today's headlines. First up, the University of North Carolina's men's basketball team has received a positive response on social media after their exhibition game. Fans were impressed by their fast pace, ball movement, and sharp shooting. But the big question remains, how will the lineup and playing time be distributed? It's an exciting season ahead for UNC. Moving on, a new report reveals that Canadians are using food banks at the highest rate since 1989. With rising food prices, many are struggling to afford groceries. The heads of Canada's major grocery chains have been called to Ottawa to discuss plans to stabilize prices. Have you used a food bank recently? How close are you to not being able to afford groceries? It's a challenging situation that needs attention. In other news, the US FDA is warning consumers not to purchase certain eye drops from major brands due to the risk of infection. This could result in partial vision loss or blindness. CVS, Rite Aid, and Target are removing the products from their shelves and websites. Remember, folks, always be cautious with what you put in your eyes. Now, let's talk COVID-19 treatments. Pfizer has set the price for its COVID-19 drug, Paxlovid, at a hefty $1,390 for a five-day treatment. While patients on Medicaid, Medicare, or without insurance won't pay out-of-pocket costs, it's still a significant price tag. The Department of Veterans Affairs and other government agencies will still have access to the drug. It's a reminder that healthcare costs can be sky-high. On a more heartwarming note, a country pub in Queensland, Australia, has launched a 24-7 food pantry to help struggling families. The Grand Hotel stocks the pantry with proceeds from raffles and encourages people to take what they need. It's an inspiring initiative that shows the power of community support. In legal news, Bayer has been ordered by a Philadelphia jury to pay $175 million in damages to a retired restaurant owner who claimed his cancer was caused by Roundup weed killer. Bayer insists the verdict is unfounded and plans to appeal. The company has faced multiple lawsuits over Roundup in recent years. Switching gears, e-bikes are in the spotlight as a cyclist in Scotland claims to have been hit by a food delivery courier riding an e-bike. The cyclist suffered a serious injury and wants to raise awareness of the dangers of improper e-bike use. It's a reminder to always cycle responsibly and be aware of your surroundings. Now, let's talk sports. 
As the NFL trade deadline approaches, several notable players are being mentioned as potential trade candidates. From Kirk Cousins to DeAndre Hopkins, there could be some exciting moves in the works. It's always fun to speculate about trades and see how they impact the league. Finally, let's take a step back in time to a 200-year-old cottage in Wales. Penrose Cottage, an example of traditional Welsh house building, is set to be preserved by a local group called Friends of Penrose. It's wonderful to see communities coming together to protect their heritage. And lastly, Scotland's First Minister, Hamza Yousaf, expresses concern for his family trapped in Gaza as the conflict intensifies. He calls for a ceasefire and action to prevent a humanitarian disaster. Our thoughts are with all those affected by the conflict. That's all for today, folks. Remember, your thoughts and opinions matter too. What are your thoughts on these news stories? Let's hear it. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.